Bryson Van. The guards are 63, Logan Duke, and 52, Max Bissett. Tackles are 77, Caden Kucher, and 78, Jackson Hennessy. Wide receivers are 46, Jack Beals, and number six, Brian Fuller. Running backs are number two, Joshua Brillo, number five, Chris Dascom, and number nine, Nico St. George. And the quarterback for the Orioles is number seven, Landon Andre. Starting offense for your Red Hawks. Center is number 62, Jacob Rice. The guards are 70, Levi Pickard, and number 54, Alex Schreiber. Tackles are 55, Julian Adams, and 78, Javian Cabrera. Receivers are number two, Ian Burt, and number 13, Ben Karen. Tight end is 52, Colin West. The halfbacks are number four, Bray Arsenal. Fullback, number 10, Caden James. And under center for the Red Hawks is number 11, Aiden Dredge. At this time, we will honor our senior band members. Amory Maxey, his parents Trent and Elizabeth Maxey. Jasmine Soto Diaz, mother Maria Diaz, and sister Miriam Diaz. Andrea Corliss, parents Peter and Cora Corliss. <laughs> Zoe Ballou, mom Eileen Crosby. <laughs> Thaddeus Connor. <laughs> Jacob Han, parents Moon Jung Kim and Nassim Watson. Patrice Moriarty, parents Barb and Bob and Heidi Moriarty, and Anna Brooks, and brother and sister Parker and Paige. Tenzin Philgay. Thelonious Sargent, parents Lynn Rothenheber and Tony Sargent. And River Rodriguez, parents Brian Rodriguez and Jennifer Silva. Your class of 2024 Frontier Regional Band Seniors, congratulations. Now we will recognize the Frontier football seniors. First up, we've got Braden Arsenault. <laughs> Bray is joined by his parents, Chris, Cassie, and his brother, Gavin. Next up, we've got Aiden Weiss. Aiden is joined by his mom, Don, brother, Mason, grandmother, Lee, Levi, and Scott.
Next up, we got Wyatt Eads. Wyatt is joined by his parents, Christopher and Colleen. Next up, Edward Michkowski. <laughs> Edward is joined by his parents, Trisha, John, and his sister, Gracie. Next up, we have Captain Ian Burt. <laughs> Ian is joined by his papa, parents Kate and Colin, sister Mary, and brother Wyatt. Next up, Captain Alex Schreiber. <laughs> Alex is joined by his parents Tom and Chrissy, brother Sam and Mackie, sister Abby, girlfriend Leah, and grandparents Tom, Shirley, Karen, George, and Carl. Last up, we've got Captain Aiden Dredge. <laughs> Aiden is joined by his mom, Megan, his dad, and coach, Scott, and brother, Garrett. Let's give another round of applause for your 2024 Frontier Red Hawk Senior. Congratulations and good luck. I'd also like to just acknowledge the seniors from Belchadon High School, Landon Andre, Josh Grillo, Chris Dascom, Caden Kucher, Tyler DePlace, Sean Luce, Michael Mascaro, Ryland Kiros, and Nico St. George. Congratulations to your seniors also.
Hello and welcome to Frontier Community Access Television. I'm Mason Smith here with Oliver Cox, Tyler Wolkowitz, Tom Albert, Kevin Murphy, all the rest of the FCAT crew. We're all here tonight. It's a big night for the Frontier Red Hawks. It's their last regular season football game this year. Um, it's the eighth game of their season and they're three and four right now hoping to pull off a win today to both even out their record and also get a shot at getting into the playoffs. It's a really, really big game for them. There's a huge turnout because it's also senior night. Um, Frontier has quite a few seniors on their team. Um, I think it's seven. But uh, this is a really big game for them, as I've said before. And uh, they're playing against Belchertown tonight, the Belchertown Orioles. Belchertown is 5-1. and one. They're in uh, Frontier's uh, conference, I think is what they're call I, I mix it up sometimes but I'm pretty sure they're in the same conference uh, Frontier is right now tied for fourth place uh, in their conference uh, the Inner County South Conference and um, Belchertown is in second place with their five and one record so it's gonna be a tough game for the Red Hawks but if they can pull it off they'll have a decent shot getting the playoff so it's gonna be a big game first we're gonna pause for a moment of silence for the those affected by in Lewis and Maine. Thank you. And now the Frontier Regional Band will honor America by playing our national anthem. All right, and the game is going to be starting in just a few moments, folks. But first, we are going to introduce our Red Hawks seniors. Edward Mitchkowski, number one, linebacker. Braden Arsenal, number four, running back. Alex Schreiber, number 54, captain, left guard, middle linebacker. Ian Burt, number two, wide receiver, free safety. Aiden Dredge, captain, number 11, quarterback. Aiden Weiss, 35, defensive back. Wyatt Eads, number 52, right guard, defensive end. All right, and here we go, folks. Frontier Red Hawks are going to be receiving the kickoff at the start of this game. And, well, I mean, just have to hope for the best at this point. Yeah. I mean, the crowd is filled tonight. Yeah, as even on Belchertown's yeah, side. Quite a few people. How far away is Belchertown? I have no idea. Okay. I like. I'm. I'm not oh, going to. Oh. Colin West is there to scoop it up. It almost got over his yeah. shoulder. I was, you know, that take over first and ten from the almost a really good yeah. opening move almost there. Almost really good. Forty-eight yard line. You know, our band is really good. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I've been to a lot of uh, away games from like Coach Cam for mm -hmm. football and plenty of other sports as well for Frontier, and I don't think that I have seen 
uh, a pep band that is better than ours. Ours is really good. Yeah, and that's mostly thanks to Max Sherrill. Uh -huh. And, and Max guy. Skrabinski. That's true. One of our He's drummers. He's a cool guy. Oh, yeah, he is a cool guy. Here we go with the first play of the game. Snap to Dredge. He's going to run it to the far side. Oh, and fumble. it's fumbled by Arsenal. Ball's still loose, and Dredge is going to fall on top of it. It's going to be a loss, but they retain possession. And that's been a worry yeah. for us all season. Um with that play, um, it resulted in a turnover when they were playing against Huzik, I remember, and that was kind of, it was a, a fatal turn of events for the Hawks in that game. And you can see Arsenal's upset with himself there yeah. on the sideline. It's just, I mean, I would be too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was just First scary. play of the game. Yeah. It's a signature move, and you pull it, and you just got to hope for the best, and it almost went horribly wrong, but yeah. So here come the Hawks out of the huddle. That's Ian Burt, and I can't tell who else as receivers. Dredge is going out as a receiver. Look at this. Oh. Snap goes through the hands of Caden James, and he's going to fall on top of it. Wow. Well, that looked like it was going to be a really interesting play, but now it's third and incredibly long for the Hawks. Yeah, 17. Jeez. Nah. I, no, I think they're still updating it. Where are they going to put him? Third and 27. Third and 27. Wow. Well, not a great place to be put into. No, not at all. Especially, I mean, like, it's your first drive of the, of the game. Mm -hmm. you, this is a must win it's been two plays. for the Hawks. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see what they can do with this. Cause, I mean, if they get it within, like, fourth and 10, I wouldn't be surprised if Dredge decides to Punt it, yeah. go for it. I mean, like, if they get within uh, the 10. If they get within like fourth and ten or less, they might go for it. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, but Dredge is back to throw. He's going to throw it to Colin oh, West, and it's oh, almost oh, caught. That could have been a fantastic <sighs> game there, but it, it just yeah. kind of bobbled around for a little bit and didn't get a good grip on it. So, yeah, the Hawks are going to punt on – I mean, that was just a couple plays that just didn't work out well. Yeah. That's a, just a tough way to start. Not anything like I like. I mean, usually on, at the end of a first drive, you can talk about the other team's defense. There wasn't really much to talk about there. I think that's oh, the base. It's, yeah, it's a bat. Punk goes off from West, and it's a beauty. Look at that. What Down within the twenty. West doing his job out there as a punter, and there, there. Well, there you go. There's Aiden Weiss. Mm -hmm. Coming out on the field, 35, one of our seniors. And I don't think, we were just talking before the game, I don't think that I've seen him play a lot. What position does he play? On defense, defensive back is what the roster says. So that would be like, that would be like a wide receiver. Yeah, he's a wide receiver on offense. Oh, yeah, I see him. Yeah. There he is out on the far side. I, I would assume that he's been injured because yeah. I've seen him play a couple games, and he's a good player. Some movement in the backfield. And there's the snap pitched over to the running back, and he takes oh, it up the wow. middle. He's got plenty of blocks. Moving to the far side of the field. Burt's trying to chase him down, and he's at the 40 now. Jukes to the middle, and Caden James is going to bring him down at the 25. Oh, wow. ball was loose at the end, but I think they're going to call it dead. What a run. That was quite a run. That's what Frontier was going for, but they couldn't really connect. That was yeah. almost an identical play. Yeah, and I we... I was talking to Javian before the game. He was, uh, I've actually talked to a couple of the football players. Oh, really? And they're, they're all, their main concern is their running back. Apparently he's just like really good. Yeah. Well, I think that was number six was their running back. And that was Brian, that's Brian Fuller. Yeah. I can't tell who their quarterback is though. I think it's seven, which is five. Andre. Oh, yeah, seven, seven. Oh, five. That's their running back. Oh, flag is thrown as the, yeah, so who is number five? No, 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 it's not, it's number seven, it's number seven. Oh, I was sorry, I keep going back and forth. Number seven is a quarterback. So there's a penalty on the Red Hawks. So number seven is Landon Andre. He is a senior and the quarterback for the Orioles. And then number five is Christopher Dascom. He's the running back that you were just saying everyone was worried about. And yeah. it looks like the Red Hawks are going to be taking a timeout. Oh, all right. Yeah, try and figure out how to deal with this explosive offense Wait, so who's far. Wait, who's the running back, did you say? Uh, Dascom. Dascom. 
Right Number top. five, five, up top, okay, right okay, there. Okay. Yeah, so they're gonna take a break on the field and so will we, we're watching Frontier Community Access Television. Welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. Once again, the pep band is doing a great job. I think that's River who's going crazy on the cowbell over there. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. And now first and 10 for the Orioles. And Frontier's red zone high snap. And a right, false start is on Orioles, called on the 15. Orioles. First and 15. They've got a big O line. They uh, yeah. I mean, we were talking about a uh, 77 before the game. Yeah. That's um, where was he? Caden Kotor. He's also a senior, and he. I think that he's probably one of the biggest guys out there. Yeah. Him and uh, 78. I'm waiting for some pancake blocks from this guy. Oh yeah. Jackson Hennessy is 78. You can see him on uh, the far side of the line right now. Some movement, and that was a false start. On the Red Hawks. Yeah, by, that was Colin West. Offside, offside on the Red Hawks. Yeah, fall, Five yeah offside. Penalty, first and ten. Sometimes I get confused on how they differentiate between those calls because there's like the false start, offside, um, infraction of the neutral zone or something, right? Mm -hmm. They're all like kind of similar scenarios, and I don't really know how they differentiate. Oh, and there's Madame Yell in the crowd. Oh, nice. I'm seeing actually a couple of teachers. Yeah. Handoff. And it's taken Chris into the end him. zone for a touchdown. A bit of a late touchdown hit there. There's no Orioles. flag. Number five, Chris and that's Daskam again with another big run. And that is already proving to be a problem for the yeah. Red Hawks, something that they got to solve and solve quickly if they want to stay in this game. Yeah. 100%. I mean, he... He's a big guy for a running back, too. And, and did you see how quickly he was, like, dodging, yeah, weaving in and out of traffic? It was like, that's just, like, impressive. yeah, it's impressive, it's scary, and it's just, I mean, like, yeah. Here's the extra point attempt, and it is good. I was taken by... Who's number 66? I'm missing, so Brian Carlin, that's his name, there he is. Brian Carlin took the extra point for the Orioles. And so now the score is 7 to nothing. Belchertown is on top, and the Hawks need to capitalize on this drive if they want to keep this a close game. That's what I would say, Oliver. Yes, 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 yes. They I don't need to, they need to like they need to fight back here. Yeah, they definitely do. I don't like to get into like they have to do this, they have to do that, especially this early in the game. Yeah, but it, like just looking at what happened in their last drive, they went three and out if they can come back and show that they can put up a good drive, it's going to be promising for the rest of the game. And, you know, it's going to be a nice show in front of the Orioles who just marched down the field in, like, probably less than 10 plays, I'd yeah, say. Yeah. Not that I was counting, but... Yeah, the stands are absolutely packed. And there's a whole line going down the fence along the track. So here's Carlin again. He's going to be kicking off, and it's another onside kick fielded by Ian Burt on the far side. Ian Burt gets to the Red Hawks to own 45. Brady Pareto. Oh, yeah, it was Brady Pareto. Number seven and two look very same when they're, like, at yeah, an angle. I get that. Yeah. So the Red Hawks are going to start with some good field position again. And let's see if we can get a first down out of this drive. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm enjoying this a lot more just because of the band. Yeah. Like last game, we didn't have a band. No, because it was pouring last game. Yeah. Hand off. And ooh, that was. I think he got pretty stuck. Pretty yeah, he got pretty stopped pretty cold. And that was Jacob Rice. He's the center for the Red Hawks. He went down immediately after he snapped the ball yard, to Dredge. Someone got a good hit on him, I guess. Yeah. 
that probably resulted in the gain of like yeah one it's second and nine so here come the Hawks out of the huddle couple receivers out for dredge movement by Burt he keeps the ball himself pitches it over to Ian Burt Burt working with the block trying to move to the outside and he will and he'll get close to the first down I think a little short but a nice run there giving the Hawks some momentum nice yeah very close to a Red Hawk first down so yeah that'll be are they just gonna give it to him or you move the ball a little bit forward. I think it's just gonna be like third and a couple inches. Yeah, it can't be more. Oh, are they? I think they're giving it. They might give it yeah. to They are gonna give it to him. First down, Red Hawks. Well, there you go. First down, first and 10 from the Red Hawks. Seven minutes left in the first quarter. And the Red Hawks have a first and 10 from the Orioles 45. Here's the snap to Dredge. He'll hand it off, and the pile's moving James forward. James That's Terry. James with the ball right now. Wow, he just powered through that entire like, big lob. That was very impressive, yeah. Jack Fields on the stop. Gain of six, second and four. It's a good gain by James. It'll make it second and four for Frontier. Something we haven't really talked about yet is just how huge Belcher Town's team yeah. is. Uh, yeah, this, it, I don't think it was as big as, who, who was the last people we played? Uh, Lee. Lee, yeah. I don't think it was yeah. as big as Lee. Because yeah. Lee had a humongous team. Yeah, I think you're right about that, but it still is a huge team regardless. Dredge is going to throw, pass. caught by Ian Burt, and he's downed uh, maybe two, three yards short of the first down. Yeah, it's going to be third and three I'd say Back third and four or something like that Bert. yep third and three third down third and three All for the right. Red Hawks big down here try and keep the play alive stay in the game I think that's James out as a receiver yeah looks like it yeah Snap. Dredge keeps himself, and he's going to be knocked down yeah, short. I think he might have been trying to hand it off to James, who was behind him. I'm not Brian sure. Oh, no. It, it was uh, Ben Karen who was out no as a receiver. No gain, though. Fourth yeah. down for the Hawks. Fourth and three. And it looks like they're going to go for it. I, yeah, I mean, I think it's close enough. that. Yeah, I, I don't blame them for doing that. They're bring, bringing out their fullback, Eddie Michkowski. Looking like it'll be a running player, at least maybe the, they're gonna try and bait him into it. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's my thought process. At least. Yeah. Here they come out of the huddle. Fourth and three from the 36. No receivers out for Dredge. Takes a snap. He keeps it himself, fakes the handoff, and he's got the first down and more. Dredge, oh. stiff arm, and he's still and up, thrown down. Oh, almost takes out the ref. Hope he's okay. Yeah. That was a nice Landon tackle Andre. by the quarterback, Landon Andre. Yeah. Smart play by Dredge, and he keeps the play alive for his team. And now we're getting into the territory of the field where I got to stand up. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you're lucky. Just got to make sure not to disconnect uh, our yeah. little audio box or whatever it's called. All right, this is looking good. It is looking good. First and 10 from the 21, I'd say. 21, 22 maybe. That's Ian Bird on the far side as a receiver. Covering him is Andre, I'm pretty sure. Handoff is going to be taken, and the ball is loose. James picks it up, and he's brought down. Play's blown dead, but the ball comes out right afterwards. So, I'd also like to mention you say Ken James goes down, but not once was he. He, was, he stood standing. He was, no, he was standing. Yeah, I was anticipating that, but he's. He took that like a chance. Yeah, he's somehow he stayed up. I don't really know how they do that. 
That's why I can't play football. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I could do that, man. You think you'd get knocked over easily? I, yeah, I probably could. <laughs> I mean, I'm tall and lanky. There's, there's a lot of area for you to hit me <laughs> where I could, like, go down really yeah. easily. Yeah, yeah, Ma- n- Namely my legs. Yeah, my legs are not very uh, um, dexterous. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not sure if that's the right word. I don't even really know. Dexterity. Dexterity, but doesn't that apply to your hands, like holding things? I don't know. Handoff faked, and now that's Pareto with it, taking it to the far side. He's going to get a couple yards, Maybe and he's Pareto pushed out of bounds. Pareto. Someone kind of went flying over there. I didn't really <laughs> see exactly what happened. Maybe tripped up a little? Yeah, yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, one of the Orioles players. Joshua Grillo want to stop. Third down. Third and seven for the Red Hawks. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, yeah. No, he died. He uh, Pareda made him miss the tackle. That's why he went flying. Thank you to Mr. Murphy for that nice replay. Missed the tackle? Yeah. He d- he dove for his legs, and Pareda kind of hurtled over him, oh, and that's nice. why he was flying. <laughs> or looked like he was just kind of stumbling, trying to stay up. A couple of receivers out for Dredge. Movement by Burt. Here's the snap, oh. looking to throw, and he's hit. Ball is loose. I think it's picked up by the Hawks. Kind of fell into the lap of Bird, and that was a. On the play. Aiden Dredge is slow to get up. Oh, what happened there? Fourth down. For I'm the not Hawks. sure, but he's coming off. Fourth and sixteen. He walked off those. I mean, that's promising. Yeah. Blindside hit there. It looked like he kind of got, like, just just at the bottom of the pile there, probably like pushed around a bunch. I'm not really sure. Well, yeah. Let's hope he. Uh, I mean, he he when he was he only looked like he was like, he looked kind of like slightly uncomfortable. Yeah. So I don't think it's anything too serious. Hopefully it's not. Oh, okay. Hand off and a flag on the play. A couple yards for the Red Hawks on the fourth and long. But let's see what the refs say. The flag came from the Orioles' side of the field, although that doesn't really mean much, I guess. I think it's just whoever saw what. Personal foul. Personal foul on the Red Hawks. So that's going to end their drive, I guess. I think, anyway. Unless I was judging the downs wrong. I kind of tuned out for a little bit. I was trying to figure out what happened to Aiden Dredge. Um, but if it is fourth and 15 right now. Penalty is declined. It's uh, Belcher Town ball first and 10. So penalty is declined, and it will be a turnover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, because it was fourth down, and if they accepted it, it would have jumped in a redo of the down. Yeah. Yeah. Smart call by um, the Belcher Town coach. Dan McCarthy. First and ten, Belchertown from the Belchertown 25-yard line. So now, um, got some okay field position. Yeah, I mean it's long field, but yeah, 75 more yards to be exact. This is 100. Back to throw. He's got plenty of time, and he's going to have to throw it off. There was no one open, and that is promising for the Red Hawks' pass coverage. There is a flag on the play. Oh, it's going to be a late hit, isn't it? Either that or intentional ground. I'm just feeling like it's going to be on the Hawks. (laughs) I just... Yeah. Yeah, intentional ground. Well, there you go. There's a bit of good luck for the Red Hawks. Yeah. That's a spot foul and a loss of down. Well, now Belchertown is way back Second within their down. own five. <laughs> Pretty much right on the goal line is what it looks yeah. like. This could be good. This could be, be really safety good. Safety territory. Yeah. I don't think we've seen a safety all year. No, and I'm, I'm hoping to see one. Yeah. Last game of the season. Second and 40. See what they can Second do. Second and 40. Hand off. <laughs> And he's going, he's going to get the first down, I bet. No one but Red Hawks around him, and he isn't even brought down before they blow the whistle. Wow. 
Dascom, he's just Powell. a unit, man. Yeah. We Saints, and now it's second and 40. He just cleared it. What is it now? Third and like five. Yeah, the third, third and like two. Yards. Yeah, third two, third and two. Thirty-eight yard rushing play <laughs> for Dascom. That was good. And you see, we see a uh, white Eads in the sideline, not in his jacket anymore, but in pads, but no helmets. So. Yeah. Hand off to Dascom again. He's caught and hit hard. Finally <laughs> brought down by Alex Schreiber with the help of Caden James. Those are the two numbers I saw. It looked like the ball was, they were trying to rip the ball out at one point. Yeah. Call the West on the south. Fourth and less than a yard. All right. This is another big down. Fourth and one. It's probably more like half a foot. By the looks of it, the chain's on the side, so they're probably going to hand it off to Dascom. And they will hit hard, and it looks like he got the yeah, first. Got yeah. Julian Adams yeah, that was Julian Adams. First down. We'll give a, he'll get credit for the stop, but he more was just down, ran over and was able to bring him down with him. Down 36 yard line. He is a unit. He is. I mean, not to discredit Julian Adams, but like Dascom, is just, he's... He's a big guy, and he can move fast, and that is fast. dangerous, Yeah. especially at this level of football. Here's the snap, handoff, and flag on the flag play, on play as he's brought down. On the carry. That was Grillo. Now Schreiber on the stop. Who's carrying the ball for the Orioles. Holding, Holding on the Orioles. Orioles. Ooh, okay. Good break. Yeah. I mean, it, it is some good luck for the Red Hawks, and it's what they need right now, but at the same time, it's a shame that that's what we're relying on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be the end of the first quarter, quarter folks. It's 7 to nothing. Four. Orioles on top. They have the ball right now, but the Hawks the putting up a good fight on defense. Um and they thank you for your we'll support. have to see Half if they can the tie the game back up in the second quarter. So yeah, we're going to be back in can. yeah we're going to be back in just a few moments. You're watching Frontier Community Access Television. Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. It's the start of the second quarter and it is first and 18 for the Belchertown Orioles. Snap, couple fake handoffs. He's gonna keep it himself, throw it downfield, and oh. Ian Burt! He had the ball and he was hit. Ball pops out and goes about 10 yards behind him. It's a shame, that was really close. What a way to start the second quarter. Yeah. Second and 18 for the Orioles is what we're heading into. And I've been saying, I've said a couple times that this is the big Second game for the Hawks if they want to yeah. get into the Second playoffs. The but Orioles. specifically, they are in, in their division, which is Division 8. The they're in 21st place right now. They need to get to 16th place in the very least if they want to qualify. Oh, there's there's Daskum again. He's still up and he'll get the first down. Finally brought down at around midfield. And that's the main reason why Frontier is isn't in a tie game right now, if not winning. Really. Yeah. That their running back is just Yeah. We I think we saw we've seen one passing play from them and that almost resulted in an interception just yeah. now. 
They've handed it off pretty much every other time to either this guy. Like they handed it off to Grillo at one point. Yeah, their run game is just extremely well put yeah. together. A couple receivers out, but he'll hand it off as usual. He finds the hole going up the middle and brought down by Caden James after the first down. St. George on a carry. Caden James on a stop. Saint Very good for Norio. Yeah, Nico St. George. Ball oh, at the have Red Hawks. Quite Hawk. a few Belcher times. Yeah. yeah. There. They're cheering just now. Yeah. You don't see that a lot, I feel like. I feel like it's usually pretty sparse out there. Yeah. Movement in the backfield. There's the snap. Tossed over to Daxon. He's brought down That's short of the first carry. down, it looks like. Colin West on the stop. Gain of eight, second and two. It's Colin West making a big play. Some supporters in the crowd for him. Second and two from the 32. Red Hawks 32. So good progress being made by the Orioles. Here's the snap to Andre, hands it off. He's going to go to the far side, slings James off of him, and he's finally brought down. Joshua Grillo, first down, Belchertown. That was Joshua Grillo again. That'll be a first down for the Orioles. First and 10 from the frontier. Well, something, that, something that's promising to me, Oliver, is that Javian Cabrera is still out on the field is, for the yeah. Red Hawks. He has had, yeah, he's had a recurring injury um, for the whole season. And if he can stay in the game today, it's going to do a lot to help the Red Hawks try and pull this game off. Yeah, I mean, and he's, he's been doing pretty well. And there's a nice yeah, stop. Carry. That was Eddie Michkowski. Eddie Michkowski on the stop for the Red Hawks. No gain there. Nice. That's a big play. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping JV can get a uh, uh, pancake going on here. Yeah, I mean, something that... Because um, he's a tall guy. Oh, he is a tall guy. He's huge. Yeah. Is that, what, what would you say he is, like 6'4 or something? Something like that. Yeah. couple receivers out for Andre. He's looking to throw. Here comes Julian Adams with the rush to the near side. It's caught, and he's pushed out of bounds by Levi Pickert. That was Joshua Grillo again. Andre to Joshua Grillo. They're going to be within the, the 10 now. Good for a first out. Yeah, this is first good for Belcher Town. From the, from the Red Hawks, six yard line. Here's Andre back to throw, looking to the end zone. He moves to the far side out of the pocket. He might be looking to run. And he's brought down yeah, after a flag. That was Alex Schreiber. Alex Schreiber. Yeah. Holding on the Orioles. Holding on Belchertown. Nice. Okay, okay. Ten yard penalty. Adding insult to injury there. Yeah. First down, Belchertown. Oh, it's a redo of the down. Yeah, redo the down, but first and 16. Well, first and goal from the 16 is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. First and goal from the... Red Hawk, 20 yard line. Oh, it is from the 20, so first and goal from the 20, I guess. Yeah, oh, I didn't notice yeah. that. Moving in the backfield, Andre's gonna hand it off, and it's handed off again. Nice little move there, but he's brought down. Loss of a yard by three, <laughs> three Red yeah. Hawks, I think. Carry, tackled by a host of Red Hawks. I think I saw Colin West in there, yeah. Well, besides uh, Chris Dascom, the defensive line is doing a pretty good job this game. Yeah. Stopping uh, the run and also uh, getting to uh, Landon Andre. Yeah. Putting some pressure on him. They'll hand it off to Dascom again. He gets through the line, and he's looking for the end zone. He'll get there. Touchdown, Orioles, number five, Chris Dascom. He just went oh, straight yeah. up the middle, and no one even touched him. Wow. Oh, looking good. 21 yard touchdown run by number five, Chris Daskin. 13 to nothing. 
It's what we have here now. Red Hawks really need to start putting something together on offense. Yeah. I think that's the main problem. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're seeing the defense fight for it. They're going for two points. False and, start. yeah. I doubt they'll go for two at this point. Yeah, there's really uh, not much. Yeah, I say, I mean, like, if I, if I was to be making the play call here, I'd have them just go for the extra point. You're already up by two scores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just make it an even two, That's you know. The two -point conversion. It looks like they're going for two, though. Or are they? Yeah, they are. He's going to take it to the far side. Weaves in between some tackles oh. and a big, whoa. Flag on play. Avery Cody on the carry. Jeez. That's going to draw the penalty there probably. Who was that? that I had no idea. Personal foul on Frontier. Yeah, personal foul on the Red Hawks. And, and that that, that was She's oh, needed to see his number. Oh James. Caden James. Caden James. I mean he He's yeah. really adamant about the sport. I'm not surprised that he put a lot of effort into that play. Here's the handoff. Dascom. He's stopped, Dascom. maybe. He might have been short. Yeah, he is. All right. After on, the th after, on the third, third attempt, third attempt. Red, Red Hawks still stop the Orioles from scoring the two-point conversion. So it's going to stay 13 to nothing. Um, technically, uh, I mean, like, technically a two-score game. But, like, if we just look at it as, like, you know, they get two touchdowns and two e uh, extra points. They kick the two extra points. You're leading the game by one. Yeah. To do that, though, you got to put some together on your offense, and you also got to figure out how to stop Dascom. Yeah. Which are two things that the Red Hawks have not been able to do as of yet in the game. But they need to do if they want to stay in this. Yeah. Because when, when there's 734 left in the first half and you're down two scores, your playoff run is not looking so good. Brian Carlin to kick off. Carlin is going to be Four kicking off again so. for the Orioles. 11, Some beautiful weather for football tonight. Yeah, it's like not too hot, not too cold. It's perfect, man. Yeah. Onside kick again. Oh, about Jumps over, over him. Burt's going to pick it up, though. Looking for some blocks. He'll go to the far side and run out of bounds. Smart play there. No, that is Burt. I'm sticking with that. I don't, who is yeah, who's the number? They the no, it was Bird. I saw number two. Run it back, Murphy. <laughs> that was that was a Spearance who jumped over it. I couldn't remember who number six was. I, I'm sticking with that though. Watch it back. That was Ian Bird. So Red Hawks starting with the ball, first and 10 from their own 35. Looks like it's gonna be a running play. And oh, Cabrera with a big hit, does it again. Whoa, he's just pushing everyone. Motion's running high on the field. And you know, I don't think I'd see that kind of play from a guy like Javian Cabrera. No, he's a but I'm loving it. He's a sweet fella. He is a sweet fella. He's one of the nicest guys I know. Some updates on other frontiers. Just a, yeah, look at that hit. That is, wow, that's big. So second and one for the Red Hawks. When we come back from this timeout, they're down 13 to nothing with seven minutes left in the first half. You're watching Frontier Community Access Television. The field hockey team will be playing for a Western Mass championship. So good luck to all the other Frontier teams.
Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. I'm Mason Smith, Oliver Cox, Kevin Murphy, Tom Albert, Tyler Walkowitz, all the rest of the FGAT crew. Here's the snap to Dredge. He's going to hand it off and the pile is going to go dead, but it looks like a first down. Yeah, it is. There James you go. That was James who got the first down. And it looks like the Red Hawks are sticking with the short running game. They'll hand it off again. Burt, he gets some blocks. Ian Burt on the carry. Let's see, that'll be maybe four yards? Uh, where's the ball at? Three, uh, mm, yeah. maybe more like three. That's three, hard to tell. Yeah, seven. three, they're gonna say three. So second and seven for the Red Hawks from midfield. Hand it off to Burt again. He'll take it to the far side, into the pile. And he's brought down pretty quickly again. Chris Daskam on the stop. Ooh, Daskam was on the stop, but he's walking off the field with his helmet off. Third down, third and five. <laughs> there. Looked like he had a collision. Maybe his helmet came off, you know? Yeah. Those kind of collisions. Oh. Ooh, someone coming on the field late. Dredge going to keep it himself. He's got plenty oh of field to work God. with. Turns the corner, and he's uh, tripped up, he's brought down after the first down. Woo! Jack well, that was one of the most exciting Harry, plays I've seen from the Red Hawks so far this game. Yeah. They catalyzed on that. That was um, who's number 11. That was Adam O'Rourke who came on late. Ooh, I didn't see who got the handoff, but he stopped short. That was Arsenal. But yeah, on that last play with Dredge running the ball, O'Rourke came on the field like right before they snapped the ball because otherwise there would have been a penalty on the Orioles. And they ran to the opposite side of the field where there was less people. Hand off to Burt. He goes to the other side. Burt brought down hard. Third and long for the Hawks. Not looking, you know, I think they can do it. I think they can do it. They've had a strong drive so far. They have, yeah. Third and 12 for the Red Hawks. There's our camera guy that I think. Yeah. His, his pictures are always so awesome. Oh, yeah. Here's the handoff. Oh, no, it's faked. And a, whoa. Cool. Arsenal leaning his shoulder into a big hit there. What happened? There was a early Michael flag on the play. On a stop. Cabrera leaning on his teammate Picker a little bit. Personal foul on the Red Hawks. Are they going to repeat the third down, or is it going to be fourth? I don't keep all of that in my head. That's the thing. Yeah, neither do I. So, yeah, five-yard penalty. Oof. Repeat third down. So, yeah, another third and long for the Hawks. Third and Well, third and 12. Like and it was third and 12 last uh, round. So, so it's like third, third, like third and like 15, 16? 15, 16. Yeah, I think it was a five-yard penalty. So, yeah, they'll say third and 17. Third and 17 for Frontier. A couple people running off. That's West and Pareda coming off for the Red Hawks. So third and long for the Red Hawks from their own, from oh, the Orioles, 43 is where I'd spot them. A couple of receivers out and the play is Time blown dead after the timeout's gonna be taken by Coach Dredge. So we'll see what they can do with this play when we come back. There's 420 left in the half, Red Hawks down by 13. You're watching Frontier Community Access Television.
Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. We're coming back uh, from a timeout taken by Coach Dredge of the Red Hawks. It's third and 17. And it's a big play. Yeah. Um, this can make or break the drive. Yeah, it really can. Three receivers out for Aiden Dredge. One man behind him for the run. He'll take the snap. Back to throw. Blitz is coming, he moves forward. Dredge is gonna keep himself and run. Dredge leads into a hit and he's gonna go down at around, I'd, I'd say they'll put him out fourth and 10. Michael Mascaro on a stop. Yeah. Fourth down. Good effort by Dredge. Fourth and got about, got less, a little less than half the distance they the needed. So, yeah. Let's see what Coach Dredge says. I don't know. I think they might go for it. Maybe. Fourth and 10 on the Orioles 35. That's a, that's a tough call. I mean, clock's winding down in the first half. You're down yeah. by 13. Go yeah, it, seems like. here we go. Burt and Karen on the near side as receivers. Dredge takes the snap. Here comes the rush. Dredge to the near side. He's looking to throw it. He'll get it downfield. Oh. And there's a flag, pass interference. Pass for number two. Clear as day. Wow. I could have called that from a mile away, man. That was Nico St. George. I didn't get a good glimpse of it. I had to lean forward. Or actually, it might have been number three. No, that was, yeah, that was Los. Great effort by Dredge. All the oh, way downfield, yeah. 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 There was Bird asking for the penalty, and he got it. That first, that's first down. Yeah. Pass interference on the Orioles. 15 yard penalty, first down for the Red Hawks. So, some new life is going to be breathed into this drive for the Red Hawks. First and 10 from the Orioles 20. Oh, Handoff taken by go. James. He's pushing James against James the line. Perry. Gets maybe a yard or two. Yeah. I'm worried. Look at Cabrera. That's worrying me a little bit. He's holding something. Yeah, he's kind of. He was just stretching out his leg a little bit while he was walking around. Yard, second and nine. He was telling us he kind of screwed up his like knee and ankle last game when he yeah, went yeah, down yeah. hard. Um. But uh. I mean, he said he was good enough to play, and he's out on the field, so evidently he is, but, you know, keep an eye on him. A couple of receivers out to the far side for Dredge. He'll take the snap, look to throw, short pass to Burt on the far side. He's looking to get out of bounds. I think he will, but he gets a couple yards anyway. No, he'll get brought down inbounds. Clock's still running. We're getting close to the two-minute mark. And it's going to be third and seven is what they're going to put him at. All right. Another, another big play, man. Yeah, it's just big play after big play. Nine easy third down conversion, especially against this tough defense from Belchertown. Burt and Karen. No, Burt's moving back into the line. Might get a handoff. Dredge will keep it himself, move to the near side, pitch it over to Arsenal. Oh, Arsenal okay. looking for the first down, makes a nice move. Oh Arsenal, Arsenal gets the first down, and he's inside the 10. Nice. What Michael a run by Mascaro Arsenal. Very good for a Hawk first down, first and goal frontier. Nice. First and goal from the eight. From Woo. the Oriole eight yard line. Well, this is the drive they needed. If there was yeah. any way to close out the first half, this would be it. They aren't going to start with the ball, though. They are not, but it's going to be a lot better going if they can get in the second half only one score down. Rather yeah, than if they can get some points at the end of this drive. Yeah. Receivers on the far side for Aiden Dredge. Mitch Kowski and James beside him for the run. Movement by Burt. He'll take the snap. Moving forward. He's looking to run it in. He'll get Aiden close. He's short. Inside the five, it looked like. Second and yeah. goal. Second and goal from the Oreo four-yard line. Four. Jeez. 
So Dredge gets half the distance they need in that running play. Nice. I like that. That was a, that was a smart call right there. I like there. that. I like Here's the snap to Dredge. He'll hand it off to James. He's pushing in the pile. Jaden James on the carry. Uh, he'll, he'll get a couple more yards, it looked like. Third and goal from the Hawks. Yeah. There's inching closer and closer. They're, they're like right on the goal line. Look at this. Yeah. Third, it's like third and goal from the one, man. Here's a snap. Dredge taking it. He's looking to throw. Oh Ian Bird, it's oh, too far. Incomplete. Oh. There's 12 seconds on the clock. I wasn't even looking at that. Oh my God. No. He went diving for it though. Bert's a little slow to get up. I think he might have gotten the wind knocked out of him, but he stands up. Uh, yeah, I mean, he does. He's walking it, it off. Yeah. Looks like he's more upset than anything. His shoulder Four pad is sticking from out. The Red Hawks from the Belchertown two yard line. Yeah, uh, I think he might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. Unfortunate. Yeah. So, fourth and goal for the Hawks. 12 seconds on the clock for the first half. And they're on the one yard line. Yeah. Basically on the one yeah. yard line. This is second up on the board. Oh. Here's the handoff. Dredge keeps it himself oh and he'll score. I didn't even notice that. Touchdown, Red Hawks. Great play call by Scott Dredge. And his son follows through. Six to 13 is the score with seven seconds left in the first half. I'd say that they'd go for two probably, but I yeah. think they might just go for one. Seeing that Brady Parada's out there, yeah. After. Brady Parada attempts the point after. Here we go, we just, hope, we just have to hope he doesn't slip this time around. Kick is up and it's good. All right, 13 to seven. And we'll probably have just one play left in the first half unless Belchertown decides to just call it. Yeah, Frontier setting up for the kickoff. So pretty much all they got to do is just kick it and stop them. And then that'll pretty much, that'll, that'll end the half, I'd say. Yeah. And then we'll have to just wait and see how the defense will stand up against the Orioles' offense at the start of the second half. All right. But before we see that, we'll get a performance by the Frontier James marching band, the Red Hawks. Yes. Chris which is bound to be exciting. very exciting. Yeah. Got our man Oliver Brown down there, all dressed up. Have you seen my Michael eyes Mastero, outfit? Oh, yeah, I love it. I think that's, here's the kickoff by James. Bit of a grounder there. Clock's running, he goes up the middle and he's hit and brought down. On return. Oh, you can, hold on. James on the stop. That's the end of That'll the be time, all right, there you go. I was worried for a second, I saw one second on there and then it went down to zero. So 13 to seven is the score at the half. Red Hawks, they, the they gotta stop the Orioles when we come back into the second half. That's all I gotta say about it. All right. Um, and we hope that Javian's injury uh, doesn't keep getting worse, because God knows we need him. All right, 13 to seven. Orioles start with the ball when we come back into the second half. And now, during halftime, we're gonna see our performance from the Frontier Marching Band. You're watching Frontier Community Access Television.
a great hand for the Red Hawk Band under the direction of Max Sherrill. from the Red Hawks. Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. We're coming back into the football game very shortly. Uh, there's a minute 50 left in halftime according to the scoreboard. And uh, it's 13 to seven. Frontier is down by six points and they, they just scored a touchdown yeah. at the end of the first half. Um, if I remember right, it, it was a run by Aiden Dredge, mm -hmm, I yes. think, yeah. Sounds about right. Um, they, the Red Hawks won't be starting off with a ball, though. They're going to be kicking off to the Belchertown Orioles. I, every time I say their name, I get so close to saying the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, like, it's a town that starts with B, and then it's the Orioles, and it's, yeah. Ten, I don't like that. James to kick off for, and for Caden James is going to be kicking off again for the Red Hawks. Um, I mean... What what First what basket. advice would you give Michael Frontier Scarrow. right now, Oliver? Back um, the Orioles. I don't know, I cause like we haven't seen much from Belcher Town's like wide receiver core, so I'm just thinking like maybe full like run heavy to be honest. Yeah, like, like run defense heavy, running blitzes and that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, and look at this kick from Caden nice. James. There's some we haven't seen very often. They're uh, gonna pitch, pitch it back. That's an interesting move. Okay. Who's it, who they pitch it to? That was a uh, Dascom. Okay, that's and that makes a lot of sense. He gets maybe 15 yards on the carry, uh, and he'll be brought down 
at the 35. Yeah, they're on 35. The so not terrible uh, field position, although that was a, I, I, those are two things I haven't really seen, like, at all First on a kickoff. From Caden James down, getting it up and getting some down. distance on the air, yeah, uh, in the air. And then, it, like, that pitch back, I don't think I've ever seen that no. at all, like, <laughs> in, yeah. in any game ever. And here are some receivers out for Andre. He's looking to throw. He has some time, and it's caught. Oh, nice oh, move oh. around Pickard. He's getting some <laughs> yardage there, and James is going to slam him down after the first down, and he gets past midfield. That was St. George again. I should remember that. That's a memorable name. Yes, it is. Yeah. I, should, I, I should do better. I think you should, yeah. Yeah. Quick snap, and here's the throw. Oh, Almost over the hands. Caught. That was Brian Fuller. Yeah, those basket catches, they're difficult. We've talked about this a couple of times, actually. I don't think we've talked about it while we're, like, broadcasting, but we've talked about it when we've been watching them warm up. Yeah. The basket catches are difficult. Yeah. Second down from the Red Hawk 48-yard line. So second and 10 from midfield for the Orioles. I mean... I think what they're doing is smart because, I mean, what you were saying is, like, they've been running in a lot, go and anticipate the run, but now they just threw it two plays in a row, yeah, trying to confuse the Red Hawks a little bit. Runner. Yeah. Dascom, and he pushes his way yeah, close to the first yeah. down. I think he's short, but he's about eight yards maybe, eight Something or nine. Like that. Ooh, that looks a little more like seven. There's, like, third and three over there. Oh, yeah, oh, wow, you got that perfect. Third and three. I'm amazing. Third and three. Gain of eight, third and three. There's a, oh, does he still have the ball? Oh my oh. God, it's turned over. The Red Hawks have the ball. And I think that's Julian Adams. I don't know. Julian Adams. I don't even know what happened. I, yeah, I think why. Oh, I'm gonna have to check the replay on this. From the Belchertown 45 yard line. So a huge play for the Red Hawks defense. That's exactly what they needed. He just took the ball right out of his hands. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I don't think I've ever seen that before. That was that was just some poor carrying by the running back, I feel like. Yeah. More than I mean it was a great play by Adams, but like your job, your one job is to hold the ball and just, you know, <laughs> and hold, like, keep possession of it and get the yards as you're pushing through everyone. And yeah. if one guy can just grab it right out of your hands, wow. But here's a great opportunity for the Red Hawks to tie the game up and maybe even take the lead from the... Orioles 45 moving by Burt. They'll fake the handoff to him and give it to Mitch Kowski. Yeah, that is Mitch Kowski. Look at him at the end of that, reaching forward with the ball. Yeah. Textbook. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always risky, though. I've seen plenty of plays where they do that, and it's just they hit him right before he yep. goes down, and it's just fumble. Yeah. It's a bold move. It really is. And again, Cabrera is out there still. Always good news for the Red Hawks. Always. Oh. A little bit of confusion there. Judge looked angry. I think there's a pen. Yeah, there's a flag down on the near side of the field. There you go. False start on the Red Hawks. I. It seemed like just a lot of chaos on the Red Hawks side there. Yeah. That's really unfortunate for them. I can't really tell what happened, though. Yeah. Because it looked like um, one of the wide receivers might have been on the wrong side. Yeah, I think that was Bird. He was kind of – like, he had his – Arms up. Yeah. I I mean, we don't we don't know their playbook, so we don't really know. But Yeah. I mean, if we knew their playbook, we'd probably, like, accidentally give every other team that information. I don't think yeah. we should be trusted with that much. <laughs> so, second and 12 – from midfield. A couple receivers on the near side for Dredge. Flag Ooh. is thrown on the far side. Flag on the play. I, Offside on okay. Okay. Offside. Right. That, I think that was 77. Five yard penalty. Keep Three losing him. Caden Couture. 
70 center. I think he's the center, right in the middle. Yeah. Well, one penalty met with another. Second and, and seven for the Hawks. Okay, so we're like we're, we're back to, we're back to neutral here, <laughs> <laughs> right where we started. Yeah. Forty-two. Look at that! The band's got hot chocolate over there, man. Why don't Why don't we get that? Or well, maybe if you didn't have all that stuff you had to do, you could have gone with us. Okay, come. Got beverages. Now you're stuck over here complaining. Hey, about I had a haircut that you can't really like. Just say, hey, I'm not gonna do that. It's hard to get a haircut appointment. Mitch Kowski's gonna take the ball, get a couple yards, although he's short of the first down, so it'll be third. I'd put him at four, or maybe and five, depending on where they spot him. Oh, look at that. That's nice and simple for me, right on the lines. Third and five. Yeah. So it's a little game for myself, you know. You try, you try and guess where they put it. <laughs> it's especially on a lot of short games. It, ma it makes it a little more interesting. Oh, it doesn't. No. You got, you got to stay involved and engaged. Burton Karen out to the far side for Aiden Dredge. He's right behind Rice for the snap. There it is. He'll hand it off to Pareda. Pareda up the middle, and he's brought down short of the first down. Looked like someone might have just gotten knocked Ooh, his over helmet there. came off. Gain of a yard, fourth and four for the Red Hawks. Now it, the question is, are they going to go for it, really? And I couldn't give you a straight answer. It looks like they will, but that's a, that's a tough call to make. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're down, you're down by six, so, I mean, it makes sense. But at the same time, if you don't get the first down, you give them, you're giving them decent field position. Here we go. It's looking like it's going to be a running play. Dredge takes a snap. A couple linemen fall down. Scramble, and I think the ball might have came loose. Yep. Recovered by the Orioles. Orioles recover, so. Not a great drive. Yeah, no, not a great drive. I mean... A great play by Julian Adams to give the Red Hawks that opportunity, but they just can't capitalize on it. I mean, what you have to hope for is that they can do it again, or even, or even just, just. I feel like a turnover might be a little too much to ask to have a repeat of that, but just stop them. Hand off to Dascom, and a flag is thrown. Foster. Yeah, yeah, false, false start, start on the Orioles. Town, We're I feel like there's been a lot 15. of false starts. Yeah. And it, it hasn't been, like, heavy on one team. It's just, like, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the, uh, maybe it's just the ref. Maybe they're being a little – maybe they're seeing things the other refs didn't. I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe it's just because everyone's a little anxious. I mean, last game of the season, they're fighting for the playoff spots. A couple receivers out for Andre. He's going to hand it off to Dascom. He oh. gets through the line. Oh. He's going to the far side. Dascom cuts back in across Burt. He's still working down the field. Oh, my God. Dascom still up, and he's finally brought down by James and Schreiber. Alex Schreiber on the top. Good he ran just Mario about half down. the whole field. Oh, my God. First and ten, Belcher Town. This guy's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Here's the throw. Caught on the near side, and Aiden Weiss is Passing there to bring him down. Jack well. Aiden Weiss on the stop. Back to standing. Yeah. It, it just has to do Aiden with the field position. You know, the, the pole is right in the way for me sometimes. A hopeful start to the second half is not looking so good anymore for the yeah, Red Hawks. No. Second and three for the Orioles. Handoff. He goes to the far side and he's going to get close to the end zone. Josh Grillo on a carry. It'll be short, but it'll be first Schreiber and goal. Carry good for a first down. First and goal for the Orioles. First and goal from the two. Yeah. Jeez. From the Hawk two yard line. That's unfortunate. Yeah, really unfortunate. 
because, I mean, like, we, well, here we go. There's a handoff to Daskam again, and he'll get the touchdown. Touchdown, number five, Chris Daskam. Yeah, that could be expected. Touchdown, yeah. And it looks like they're going to go for two as well. Which is also to be expected. Yeah. 66. Oh, no. No, they aren't. I judged that wrong. They're going for the extra point to make it 20 to 7. Here's the kick. It's good. Six oh three remaining here in the third quarter from the frontier regional Six minutes left in the third quarter. And I mean here here's the issue that I'm seeing that Frontier has to face, yeah, Oliver. Let's see it. They let's see it. I mean, they've had some good drives on offense. Yeah, yeah. They were able to score. Mm -hmm. They had some good plays on defense. They were able to stop them, get that great turnover by uh, Julian Adams. Yeah, the yeah. problem is consistency, yes. doing that again and again. And if you can't do that again and again, you're not going to stay in the game. Yeah. And, I mean, like, this is looking uh, very similar to the game against uh, Huzik, where the Red Hawks had some good field position, a couple of good drives, but they couldn't capitalize on the opportunities that they gave themselves uh, on the defensive end of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. You'd get a turnover, and then you just couldn't, you know, find a way to turn it into points. And that that's that's the issue, I think. Yeah. I think I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, it's, not a, it's definitely not a question of do they want to win this game. Of course they do, and they're all yeah. fighting for it. You can see that they're all fighting for it. Here's the onside kick. Goes between the legs of Pickard, and Burt will Pickard barely catch it and makes a smart Eight, play, falling right on top of it. Ten. Yeah, the last thing you want to do on a kickoff is fumble it. From the frontier, 34 yards. Yeah, Almost did that on like, the very first kickoff of the game. Yeah. There's 18 minutes left in the game in total mm -hmm, yeah. right now. Frontier is down by two scores. The game is not over. There just needs to be some changes that happen on the field for the Red Hawks if they want to make this a close game. Here's the handoff. I think that's Mitch Kowski, though I can't really tell. Someone's down on the field. I'm not, I don't even know who, yeah. what team oh, it's on. I think it's an Orioles player. Yeah, yeah. he's holding his leg and they're gonna take a break on the field and so will we are watching Frontier Community Access Television. Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. That was Chris Dascom who just went down. Uh, he got it. Looked like it was just a cramp. It looked like. Um, but he was uh, helped up and he walked off the field. Um, that's. I mean, if it turns out to be more than just a cramp, that is bad news for the Orioles. Yeah. Here's the snap to Dredge. It's high. Hands it off to James, and, and James he and will get a couple of yards. Yeah, Fields on a stop. It'll be third, third and three. Three for Frontier. Nice. I did it again. You're doing pretty good at that. Yeah. Soon you can be one of the chain gang. <laughs> <laughs> I we were talking about this before the game. I don't think that I would want to, <laughs> even though they were they were kind of advertising for it before the game because they always need a little help and they're like best seats in the house. And it's like those are also seats where I could get hit by the players. So yeah, I, I don't know if I'd really want to. <laughs> Movement by Burton in the backfield. He'll get the handoff. He works to the outside. Right. Makes a nice move. Oh yeah, there is a flag. 
Oh, holding on the Red Hawks. Sean loose on the carry. Dredge is angry. I, I don't blame him. You can't afford to make those kind of mistakes no. when you're down by two yeah. in the second half. It's Pulling just. Hawks, 10 yard penalty. Oof. Yeah. 10 yards is. That third is, down. Yeah, another third, third and long third, for the Red Hawks. And, third and that's 13. been the story all night. They have a decent drive. They, like, you know, get some yardage. And then there's a penalty at the end of second on the second down, and then it's a third and long. Yeah. It just, it's been happening again and again. And that's why Dredge is upset because it keeps happening yeah. and it keeps killing their drives. Dredge takes the snap, moves to the near side, might be looking to pitch it over or throw it. He'll throw it, oh, and it's intercepted. Yeah. Karen pass. couldn't get in front of – that was Andre who intercepted it at the 45-yard line. First and ten Orioles from so after a tough penalty, Red Hawks turn it over yard. around midfield and give the Orioles some great field position. Unfortunately. I mean, it happens every game, but it keeps coming down to the defense. Yeah. Not that they're the problem, but that they need to make the stops, you know. Yeah. And part of that has to do with, you know, the offense can't make the conversions on third down, and then they turn it over, and it's left up to the defense to give them the ball back. Yeah. Orioles come out of the huddle. Movement and Andre takes a snap, hands it off. There's the running back working up the middle. He's going to get close to the first down, but Jones stopped by about five Red Hawks. Caden James on a stop. That was Joshua Grillo again, and I'm not I'm not seeing Daskam out there. I'm not seeing him just yet. He's on the sideline. Might be looking to come in. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it might. Come on and on the next play. Yeah. But. Orioles line up. A couple of receivers out. He'll hand it off, off again. Ooh. Through a hole in the line. And Schreiber wow. and Cabrera there. <laughs> There's Cabrera just laying down on top of him. That was... Good Michael Muscaro, number 27. Kind of reminds me of this. Uh, I used to play line. football when I was younger. Really? I had this one tackle where this uh, where one of my teammates had already wrapped him up. Mm -hmm. and I'm running after, and I just <laughs> I hit him harder than I needed to hit him. Yeah, was oh, there a penalty? Oh, dang! And a <laughs> dang! I think that was James again who slams him down, kind oh, of into his teammate. Yeah, James Pareda. Prada took the impact of that throw by James. I'm kind of scared. That was, yeah, that scared me that too. Was power, I was, that was powerful hits. I thought someone was just like hitting the bleachers or something. Because the kids will do that. Second and two, handoff. Oh, almost wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. He'll get close to the first down though. Might be Mark Short. I think they might. No. Nope. Yeah. They'll give it to him. From the Hawk 35 yard line. Two minutes left in the third quarter. It's first and 10 on the 35 for the Orioles. Another promising drive for them. But, I mean, hey, maybe we could get another great play from Adams. Maybe. You never know. Here's the snap. Rush coming. And oh, the throw. Too low. I don't think he was even looking for it, just like <laughs> St. George was the intended receiver. And I think if some of you watched that back, it, he, he was running his route and he didn't even look around uh, ready for the ball. Yeah, he wasn't expecting it to be yeah. down to that quickly. And I guess Andre 
must have felt like he had to get it away quick yeah. because of the rush from the Red Hawks. Orioles line up. Second and 10 from the 35. Fake the handoff. And up the middle, he's got some blocks and he'll be brought down. Grillo Alex Schreiber. Schreiber on the stop for the Hawks. First that was Grillo again. He's doing a nice job stepping in to fill Dascom's place on the field. Yeah. And Dascom is still on the sideline. It might be just giving him a rest. First down from the 24 yard line. First and 10 from the 24. One receiver, two receivers out for Andre. He's calling out motion. Ooh, false start. Play, false start on the Orioles. Ooh. Five yard penalty. First and 15. There was, yeah, I could see some kind of like ripple of movement there. Yeah, I, yeah, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't see who it was. Oh, he was just motioning to keep the clock going. I thought he was waving the flag off for a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Timeout? Yep. Timeout's going to be called, I think, by the Orioles. Pretty sure. There's some, hold on, there's some miscommunication going on. Official's timeout. Oh, oh timeout. There, there's some going on with the chains over there. You can see that. Yeah. Well, we got 50 seconds left in the third quarter. First and 15 is the situation for the Orioles. They're on the Red Hawks' 30-yard line. So, I mean, you're up by two scores. There's no First reason why you should think Hawks of settling for a line. field goal. Yeah. When, you know, in the Red Hawks' case, you kind of just... I feel like you might just have to take what you can get mm -hmm. when it comes down to it if you're yeah. in field goal range. Which, you know, we don't really know what that is, is the interesting thing. Yeah, they don't they don't kick many field goals. No, they don't. Fake handoff again. And, oh, missed tackle there. St. George looking for the first down, and he'll get close. I think he might be a little short, though. Grillo on a carry. Oh, no, that's not St. George. That's Grillo. I'm sorry. St. George is number nine. Yes. Second down. And yeah, there's a timeout taken by the Hawks. Actually, no, not a timeout. That is the end of the third quarter. It is 20 to seven. Red Hawks still down. The game's not over yet, but it's not looking good for the Red Hawks. I can tell you that. Um, we'll be back in just a few moments to see what Frontier can do to try and pull themselves back into this game in the final 12 minutes of play. You're watching Frontier Community Access Television. Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. We're getting right back into the action. Here's a handoff going to the middle. I got faked out there. And a nice play by the Red Hawks defensive line to wrap up the run. That was Grillo again on the carry. Score is 20 to seven if you're just joining us. Red Hawks down by 13. First and it's looking like the Orioles are going to make it into the end zone again as they got a first down here. And they're on maybe the 13-14, 13 14 something like that. Here's the snap to Andre. He'll hand it off. Grillo takes it up the middle, hit hard by James, Grillo and he'll go Gary. down. Caden James, Eddie Miskowski on a stop. Schreiber was Eight there, six, too, delivering that big hit I was talking about.
It'll be second down and four from inside the 10. Couple of receivers out for Andre. Though I wouldn't be surprised if he hands it off to Grillo again. Moving by St. George, he'll toss it over to Grillo and he slips through the tackle, hit hard by James and he's finally brought down. The ball's loose. James picks it up. James running down the far sideline. He's got to beat Andre. And Caden James, what a play. Oh my God. That is exactly what we need to see right now. <laughs> I, we were just saying during the break, you know what we need? We need an interception pick six by Ian Burt. But in, instead we got a fumble recovery, ran back for around 20 yards or so by Caden James. There was a flag on the play, but it's being waved off apparently. I didn't even notice the flag was thrown. Yeah. Well, they, you you need to score points now. Of course. You, you have to. Not. If you don't score points on this drive, there's not much it, hope for you in the rest of the game. Time's yeah, running out. Yeah. You're down by two, and you just got a great opportunity from your defense. Mitchkowski got to hurry up, get on the field to get the playoff. Here's the snap to Dredge. He'll pitch it over to Arsenal. Arsenal works through the middle. Arsenal oh. trying to break Arsenal through, and he's going to – I think he might just be like a yard short of the first down, although they might give it to him. He got pretty close there. I had a good angle there for once. Uh, yeah, it was they like, get, yeah. Josh Rillo on a stop. Yep, they'll give it to him. No. Or no, they won't. Yeah, a yard short. I first down Red Hawks. They, oh, okay. Yeah, they'll give, they'll give the first down. I don't know what took them so long. And now there's oh, a there, okay, oh there's, there's a timeout taken by Belcher Town. A lot of confusion going on. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. We got ten Good minutes left in the game. Red Hawks have a first and ten situation from midfield and they're down by thirteen. Let's see what they can do. We'll be back in just a few moments. You're watching Frontier Community Access Television. And then boys soccer here at 2 o'clock against Belcher Town. Good luck to both teams. Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. I'm Mason Smith here with Oliver Cox, Kevin Murphy, Tom Albert, Tyler Wolkowitz, all the rest of the FCAT crew. It's first and 10 from midfield for the Red Hawks. They're down by 13. Here's the handoff, faked, and it's tossed over to Ian Burt. Ian Burt's working to the near side Ian and he's Burt brought and down Scarrow. after about a yard. Burt seems to be a little upset that there wasn't as much blocking there as he would have liked. Exchanging some words with his coach. But, I mean, what I will say about the game, Oliver, is this has been very exciting so far. Yeah. yeah. It's had its ups and downs. Also, tomorrow, the but, teams will be you know, the at the end of the day, I think that the Red Hawks have put up a great fight against this really good team. Good yeah. And, and huge runners. team, too. Humongous. Not only the players, but size, too. Oh, yeah. They are some tall guys. Hand off to Pareda. He's wrapped up, but he works his way back. Pareda might be looking at a loss, but he gets a nice block there, oh. and he is looking at a big loss. I thought he could have made something out of nothing there, but a big loss for the Red Hawks. Unfortunate. And I think that Coach Dredge is just, he's starting to be upset with that offensive line. Yes, 16, 17. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Six, second and 16. So, yeah, now they have another third and long situation. Again, this has been <laughs> happening all night. While we're waiting for them to come out of the huddle tomorrow, me and Oliver and also Tyler, I think Tom might be there too, but uh, we're coming back here uh, tomorrow afternoon starting at 2 p.m. is uh, the boys' soccer game. It's the Western Mass semifinals. I think they're also playing against Belchertown, actually. Yes, yes. Um, it's... Um, 
big game they're trying to get to the Western Mass Finals. Second year in a row, I think, although it might be they might be have a longer streak than that. But um, it's sure to be a good game. Um, so And it's also free admission. Yes. So if you're in the area, to come out to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Whistle is blown on the play before the ball is snapped. Flag is down. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. There's a little bit of good luck for the Red Hawks. Third and 11. Yeah. I could do that. I'm so proud of you. I know. Thank you so much. Yeah. I. Math is not my strong subject, so I genuinely am proud of you. <laughs> I've got uh, calculus with Mrs. Johnson next semester, and I, I'm i glad I have Mrs. Johnson, but i got to tell you, I'm not looking forward to it, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 7.30 left in the game. Third and long for the Hawks at midfield. A couple of receivers out on either side for Aiden Dredge. He'll take the snap. He's back to throw. Under pressure, he works forward. Oof. Might be sacked, and he will. Wow. Plays The ball comes out, but I think the play was dead before that, and he is hurt. He pounds his fist on the ground, and the players are going to take a knee. Fourth down, fourth and 12. Let's down. hope he's okay. They're going to take a player. quick break on the field, and so we are watching Frontier Community Access Television. Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. Uh, it is fourth and long for the Red Hawks. Aindredge is off the field. Looked like someone, uh, whoever made that sack, landed on him in a, at an awkward angle. Yeah. So now, out as a quarterback. Oh no, there's, they're punting the ball now. Colin West. Oh, gets it off. Nice. What a beauty of a punt that is. Wow. Arsenal is there to down it. Wow. We've seen a lot of beautiful punts from Colin West this whole yeah. season. The EMS is over with Aiden Dredge. And... I, I don't think that we're going to see him back in the game today. No, no, not at all. That, that looked pretty bad. He he couldn't walk off the field, but we wish him the best. I hope he gets well. I wonder who they're going to put up as QB. Well, the, I'd say they'd either put in Garrett. Garrett. They also, I've seen them put in uh, Caden James oh. in as quarterback. I saw that last year, but... Nice stop there by the Red Hawks line. Pareda in there, getting part of the tackle. On a stop for the Hawks, gain of five, second and five. It is going to be a gain of five, though, so. I wonder who thought, like, let's get, like, this, like, weirdly shaped ball, throw it to each other, like, crash it to each other. Yeah, whose idea was it to I invent football? Who I did that? I don't know. You're right. It is a very odd concept, I guess. It probably was inspired by rugby, though, because didn't oh, wasn't rugby sure. around before then. Andre with the throw. Oh. Nice catch by St. George. He's going down the far Tackle side. Nico St. George. Tackle is made by Aiden Weiss at Aiden midfield. Weiss like 30. Completion good for a Belchertown first down. Yeah, that's Weiss. Ten right at midfield. Unfortunate. Yeah. <sighs> Hand off, oh, straight oh, up the wow. middle, and he's got wow. plenty of blocks there. He gets a first down and maybe five Grillo or six more. That was Grillo again. Very good for an Oreo first down. Oof. Belcher Town from the Red Hawk 35 yard line. First down, Belcher Town. Yeah. Five minutes left in the game. Yeah. See Jacob Rice, the center, and Garrett Dredge are warming up on the sideline. Looks like Garrett's going to be the new quarterback for the game. There's a flag on the play. 
Flag on a play. And somehow, I couldn't tell who was running the ball, but he was still up. On the carry. Let's see what the call is. Oh, it looks like on Belcher time. Yeah, they're moving it back. Holding on the Orioles, 10 yard penalty. Oh, it was Muscaro who was on First the down, run. That was very impressive. First in, very impressive run by him. Wow, first and 20. Hawk, 45. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean that much to the yeah. Orioles offense. Yeah, We've yeah, seen yeah. them blow through that. I mean, you remember the first and 40 towards the start of the yeah. game? Got th the 38 yard running play. There, there you go. He's running into his own guy. Yeah. Look at that. Knocked his own guy down. That was Josh Grillo again. Second down. Second and 14. He gets six yards on the carry. And more than anything, time is just taking off the clock. Yeah. Wasting away. Three, four minutes left. Still need, what, two touchdowns? Yeah. 13 points to tie it up. Handoff. Grillo up the middle. He's looking for more, and Burt's going to have to Grillo drag him Gary down. Burt on a stop. Gary good for Norio. First down, first and 10. Belchertown from the Red Hawk 19 yard line. Jeez. <sighs> I mean, it's tough to be optimistic in a situation like this time running out and not only are you I mean like they're going to get the ball at some point but beyond that your starting quarterback is out for the rest of the game he's yeah. taking his pads and his jersey off on the sideline and has a towel over his head and it's just not looking good yeah all you can do is just I, you know hope that it's not as bad as it looks and that when you see him in the hallways he's not walking around on time some crutches frontier. yeah hope not yeah JV and Cabrera on the stop. JV. There you go. So 314 left in the game. Orioles in position to score again. The Red Hawks are going to take a timeout. We'll be back in just a few moments. You're watching Frontier Community Access Television. back to Frontier Community Access Television. It is second and four from the 13 for the Orioles. Grillo again up the middle, and it looks carry. like he'll get close to the first down. Skowski and Bird on the stop. Timeout It'll be Sierra. third down, and timeout. the Red Hawks take another timeout. At this point, they're just trying to preserve the time on the clock. Yeah. Um, third and one. It'll be third and one uh, when they come back from the timeout and I'd also just give like to give the marching band another shout out yeah because they're doing a great they're job doing a tonight great job. and they're having so much fun over there I can tell um, and it's also I mean they've played in some pretty horrible conditions too they've played in conditions where it's like so cold I can't even like move my fingers and somehow yeah. they're doing it out there against cold brass instruments and everything yeah. like that it's, it's very impressive and you know yeah So they're coming back out on the field after the timeout. Orioles line up, two receivers out for Andre. Third and one, they'll hand it off. He gets some blocks, he's looking for the end zone. He'll get brought down at about the three by Ian Burt. He's getting hyped up yeah. over there. First and goal. He's, he's looking for timeout. Like, Red Hawks. Is that another timeout? Wow. Yeah, they're, they're just trying to stop the clock. Yeah, yeah, give themselves as much time as they can. I mean, it's not completely outrageous to think that they could have a 
phenomenal play uh, and a great drive. I mean, like we were just saying before with the, the fumble recovery by uh, Caden James, we, we need a big play from him. Yeah, yeah. He's getting hyped up over there. You get a nice pass uh, and some good blocks. He's going the distance. There's no doubt about it in my mind. You just need to get draw up the right play. It's got to be the right moment. And, you know, maybe maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. But, you know, you got to hope that it does if you're a Red Hawks fan. Yeah. So here we go. First and goal from the three for the Orioles. Looks like James might be blitzing. And... That'll touchdown. be a touchdown. Orioles, Joshua Grillo. Josh Grillo again on the carry, and he'll get another six points, making it 26 to seven. Not good. No. Uh, no. I think uh, I think this game is all but over. Yeah. It's just a matter of if the Red Hawks can put together an exciting, you know, last minute drive, and on a high note, you know. After. Yeah. Which is, uh, I mean, you gotta hope that they do after a tough game like this, and having a scary injury like that happening to your starting quarterback. Oh, and it, 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 <laughs> it hits the crossbar and it's no good. All right. I don't think I've seen that. So a 19 point lead for the Orioles. The result of the game is all but said and done. Yeah. It's just a matter of what the final score is gonna be. And you gotta imagine that the Red Hawks are gonna try and make it as close as possible. I'm pretty sure that was Eddie Mitchkowski doing their little chant on the sideline there. And right now we've got two, uh, what, two starting players for the Red Hawks who have been, uh, one of them sat out the whole game, and then yeah. there's Aiden Dredge as well. Wyatt E, too, I th I'm assuming is still recovering from uh, his injury from the previous game. Um, and you can see the fans are starting to pile out. Yeah. Arsenal. back for the Red Hawks. There, there might be a timeout taken by Belchertown. I think that's what's going on, yeah. Uh, maybe? They're running right back out onto the field. I really I, don't. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Who knows? We don't, we don't know. Two things you gotta hope for for the Red Hawks in the last 250 of this game is that you can come down and you can score some points to end on a high note and that Javian Cabrera doesn't get injured in the last couple minutes. Here's the kickoff. Bumbled. Bobbled playing. around a little Bumbled. bit. Fielded by Ben Karen. He works to the far side, near side, and he's oh, brought down by ben the legs. The Looked like he was gonna turn the corner there, but. Not much of a gain there, no. and also not much blocking to help him out. Joshua Grillo on a stop, first and 10 Hawks. First and 10 from, from the, the 23, yard line. 23, yeah. Long field for the Hawks, and not a lot of time to get that last score that they want. And they'll go for it with everything they got. Yeah, I mean. That's all you can do. Mm -hmm. Garrett Dredge, he's looking to throw. Far sideline, oh. it's picked off. Garrett Dredge's pass. Intercepted by. Intercepted Andy by Andre, Andre. that's his First second interception of the game. Williams. A little slow to get up is Ian Bird. But he's walking it off, it looks like. Got the wind knocked out of him earlier in the game. But he's doing all right. 2.30 left in the game, and the Orioles have possession again. Yep. That's incredibly unfortunate. Yeah. It was a nice, nice start to the game for the Red. Well, they had that really tough first drive, but they kind of brought it back. 
got within one score, and the game just kind of slipped away from them after that. They couldn't uh, keep up with uh, the running game that the Orioles kept pushing every, pretty much every single play. Um, and that's why we're looking at a 19-point lead in by Belchertown right now. Yeah. yeah. Relo on the carry. Eddie Miskowski on the stop. Miskowski gets the stop on that play. Two, second and eight. Limiting the run to only two yards. Clock is going, and we're at the two-minute mark now. I mean, I, I wouldn't say 20 to 7 is close, but, you know, yeah. one, one, one could hope at that point. But right now, there's not much to hope for. Yeah. If you're a Red Fox fan, that is. Yeah. That'll be a first down, it looks like, for the Orioles. Some good sportsmanship. You always love to see that. And I mean, like, as, as tough as... The referee shuts down the marching band. All right. Probably the worst call I've seen all season. <laughs> I, there's no reason for that. <laughs> it's a tough game for the Hawks, man. Let them have some fun. Oh, and there you go. There. Landon Andre takes a knee, letting the clock run out. Okay. Well. They'll probably just have one more down, maybe two. But I mean, there's the game. It's, like I said before when I was doing a little bit of a recap, um, tough start for the Hawks. They came back, made it a close game, one score game, and then it just got away from yeah. them. The running game um, was just tremendous from the Orioles. Um, Hawks did all they could, and unfortunately there was uh, a couple injuries that we saw on the field, namely Aiden Dredge, who is still on the sideline, and we wish him all the best. Uh, I really hope he's doing okay because yeah. he did not look good out on the field. Um, but the Red Hawks are going to end their season with a 3-5 and five record. Um, had a couple really good games. They had yeah. that great game against uh, Franklin Tech um, where they won 27-22, uh, to 22, I think was the score. That's the end of the game um, here for the Frontier Regional They School also, the uh, the they had, um, uh, what was the, the other team that they Red played Hawks. right after that? Um, what team? They won against Greenfield, 38-18. to 18. Yes. Uh, and they also won their last game against Lee, 14-6. to 6. And so, I mean, a really tough senior night and really unfortunate injury for Aiden Dredge. Um, yeah. But overall, I mean, a respectable season for the Red Hawks. We saw some phenomenal plays from uh, so many different players. Julian Adams uh, today with that great, he, did, he wasn't even a fumble recovery. He just tore the ball out of his arms. Yeah. Um, Ian Burt almost every game with a huge, huge play. Brady Pareda, uh, Braden Arsenal, Aiden Dredge. And will you look at this, the whole team from Belchertown coming over and giving Aiden Dredge a handshake because he couldn't get in the line. That's really special, man. Yeah. You love to see that. Love that's see that. that's really great. So I mean, I'd also like to mention that uh, their helmets are nice. They they have some nice out. It's shiny. I I love yeah. that. All right. Well, really tough uh, last game for the Red Hawks once again. Uh, we wish the best to Aiden Dredge. Hope he has a good recovery and that he isn't hurt too bad. Red Hawks end the season with a 3-5 and five record. Some great moments to look back on. Uh, you can watch pretty much all of them, almost all of the games. I'd say like six out of the eight games yeah. we've covered on FCAT. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're going to end the season 3-5 and five record. They lost this game 26-7. Uh, to seven. That was the score. And... Um, yeah, there isn't much else to say besides that. Is there anything else you want to add, Oliver? You know, I, th I think I don't think I do. No. Yeah. All right. Well, we wish the best to the seven seniors uh, who celebrated uh, this game. Ian Burt, a 
Ilya Mitchkowski, Braden Arsenal, Aiden Dredge, Aiden Weiss, Wyatt Eads, and Alex Schreiber. Um, we won't be seeing them next year, yeah, but we'll, we'll, I think we'll see most of them in some other sports later in the year. Um, so once again, final score for the last time, 26 to seven, Red Hawks finishing the tough last game of the season. I've been Mason Smith, Oliver Cox, Kevin Murphy, Tyler Wolkowitz, and Tom Albert, all the rest of the FCAT crew. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We hope you have a good time. You've been watching Fight 2 for the